from Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School, and with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. My name is Father Pat Fitzpatrick. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from two donors. The first donor is T.S. from Ajax, Ontario, in thanksgiving for blessings received, for Anita's birthday today, and for the souls of her departed family members. And the second donor is an anonymous donor from London, Ontario, in memory of his wife, Margaret, on the fourth anniversary of her death. Her soul was called to heaven four years ago to meet with her parents and eight siblings on May 23, 2014. And also included in this offering is for the souls of the faithful departed. Our thanks to both donors for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. may the risen Lord be with you all. Amen. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of James. Beloved, those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Adulterers, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you suppose that it is for nothing that the scripture says, God yearns jealously for the spirit that he has made to dwell in us? But he gives all the more grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy into dejections. Humble yourself before the Lord, and he will exalt you. The word of the Lord. Oh, yeah. 
shelter for myself from the waging wind and tempest. Confuse, O oh Lord, confound their speech. Throw your cares on the Lord, and the Lord will support you. For I see violence and strife in the city. Day and night they go around it on its walls, and iniquity and trouble are within it. Throw your cares on the Lord, and the Lord will support you. crucifies the world to me and me to the world. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, the Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him, and three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, Jesus asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. Jesus sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first, must be last of all and servant of all. And then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. So we're back to what we call in the church's calendar, ordinary time. I like green vestments. I don't call them ordinary. They're important colors, vestments. But anyway, how many weeks a year are there in ordinary time? How many would you guess? 34. 34 out of 52. Nearly three-fifths of our church calendar is given over to ordinary time. And once Pentecost is over, that is from now until the last Sunday in November, we pick up the seventh week of January, the seventh week of ordinary time, that will carry us through summer and into Advent, close to Christmas again. Uh, a Jesuit 
George Macaulay described ordinary time like this. By marking off 34 weeks of ordinary time from the feasts, solemnities, and special seasons, the church admits a kind of realism about God's time. We do not always have to feel we're caught up on some jet scheme of sacred time. We often have to slog it out to burrow along in the drab and banal events of life, the everyday comings and goings. He called a possibility that as being a drab event. I looked up that word drab and I got dull, monotonous, unattractive. I don't know, what do you think? Unattractive? Then the word banal. Well, I got that commonplace, trivial, more of the same day after day. I'm aware that some of you would probably describe your life in those words. It wasn't always that way, maybe. It usedn't to be like that, perhaps, but that's the way it is now, ordinary. So, is our church going to be uh, realistic when it gives 34 out of the 52 Sundays of the year to ordinary time? Once again, back to George Macaulay. Some people live their whole lives in ordinary time. That's why it's comforting to see it firmly in place in the liturgical calendar. Jesus himself logged a lot of ordinary time without the visions and the ballyhoo. So we can be grateful for ordinary time in our lives and go with it. It struck me that St. Therese of Lisieux logged a lot of ordinary time in her Carmelite convent. It struck me too that the Curie of Ars logged a lot of ordinary time in his ordinary parish. In fact, more of the saints might well describe their lives and our own lives too. Very ordinary. Or do we need to re-emphasize the God of the ordinary? Far too often, Jesus is depicted performing the extraordinary, you know, the miracles, the cures, the multiplying fish and bread. And when he turns up as the risen Christ, he comes through locked doors, appears and disappears, is now here, now there, has breakfast ready for them when they bring their boats ashore after a night out on the lake, brings to mind the catechism question, where is God? And the answer, God is everywhere. God is in ordinary time too. Of course, our catechism had to spoil what I would think is a perfect answer by adding this. Even our most secret thoughts and actions were naked and open to God's eyes. God is out to get you. No, no, no. And then comes uh, the third person of the Blessed Trinity, the Holy Spirit. Well, we celebrated that feast two days ago on Pentecost Sunday. Our best our feast day for us as Spiritans. But uh, don't expect us to tell you that last Sunday we were all together in one place, going back to the coming of the Holy Spirit after the resurrection of Jesus. We were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting divided tongues as a fire appeared among us, and a tongue rested on each of us. 
And uh, the, the Acts of the Apostles says, all of us were filled, filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave us ability. Well, as Spiritans, yes, we did celebrate Pentecost last Sunday. But I assure you, it was not anything like that first Pentecost Sunday. So, Pentecost has come and gone for this year, but the Holy Spirit will have touched our world and will continue to do so in and out, season by season, if we are open to his coming. Please stand. For all of those in the Daily TV Mass community that have asked to be included in our Prayer Intentions book, especially those who are suffering in mind, body, and spirit, that they may receive relief and comfort from Christ's healing touch, we pray to the Lord. For victims of war worldwide, we pray to the Lord. For those who have lost a family member recently, we pray to the Lord. For our personal intentions, we pray to the Lord. Deep peace of the running wave to you, deep peace of the flowing air to you, deep peace of the quiet earth to you, deep peace of the shining stars to you, deep peace of the God of peace to you. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself, and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore, he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending down your spirit upon them so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> At the time he was betrayed <coughs> and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Fran Francis, our Pope, and all our bishops. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her husband, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. <clears throat> thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer one another that peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one of mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go from this Mass in the peace of Christ. Thanks our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. Remember, if you can't sponsor a Mass, any contribution, no matter how small, will help keep Daily Mass on television. And you'll receive an income tax receipt for your donation. Jesus.